this story is called The Dragon Prince's Letter to His Father, which is taken from my book of short stories. Uh, it will come out again uh, later in October by Ethos Books. It's a reprint. Uh, but yeah, so this is a story from that anthology. The Dragon Prince's Letter to His Father. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, Dad. There's something very romantic about this human way of inserting a letter into a bottle, then flinging it out into the sea, in the hope that someone far away will find it and read its contents. I guess it is romantic because there's always the chance that nobody will. As such, I'm sending you my letter in this same primitive fashion. I'm doing so because it does me good to write this things out of my system. It ultimately makes no difference to me whether you read it or not. Casting this bottle up into the sea will be a symbolic gesture of moving on so that I may live happily in the future. But if this bottle, bottle does end up on the doorstep of your underwater kingdom, and if you have decided to read the curled up paper inside, then here are some things that you may need to hear from me. As a start, let me first assure you that you will never find out where it is that I'm writing from. So do not even bother trying to find us. Your foot soldiers or flying swordfishes and armored lobsters can do little on land anyway. And leaving you was truly the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Mother would agree. Even though she hated to see me go, if you are not going to let her read this, being the tyrant that you must still be, please at the very least give her my love. Do you miss me? even if just a little, even though I know you would kill me with your fiery breath if I were to show up at your, do at your feet at this moment. Underneath all that rage, do you ever wish you could return to the old days when I used to pull on your beard and your horns while perched on your knee, or the times when you taught me how to transform into a full-length flying dragon and to soar with you in and out the ocean, catching sunlight on our long, glimmering bodies? Those days, feel very far away now. I guess you could say I'm appealing to your <clears throat> better nature if it exists at all. And now the string of apologies. I am sorry I did not become the son you had always dreamed about. I'm sorry I failed at becoming a warrior. I'm sorry I've always found spears, swords, and the wearing of heavy armor distasteful. I'm sorry I'll never marry the dragon princess from the kingdom of the southern sea. She's not my type, as you might have already guessed. I'm sorry I confided in mom and not you, although she never accepted my decision to be who I was. She never stopped listening to me. I'm sorry you have become the only one of the four dragon kings in the oceanic realm whose son ran away with a human, a male no less, and not even royalty at, at that. I'm sorry I'll never be the supreme ruler of your eastern sea with its armies of servile prawns and cuttlefish sucked up to by your team of wrestlers and parrotfishes, those hermaphroditic advisors who cling to your tail all day, nodding to everything you could proclaim. The idea of being king has never really rocked my world, I'm afraid. You have read this far, then I guess you might also be willing to hear about how I met Wei Zhang. So let me tell you something about that night. It was a windy night and I transformed myself from a dragon into a Chinese fisherman to sit by the sea looking up the stars. You should try it sometime. I mean looking at the stars. It makes one feel as if one is never alone, that there are other worlds more beautiful than the one we are in. Wei Zhang was taking a stroll along the beach where we bumped into each other. We started talking about stars, the moon, the larger universe, blah blah blah. The more we spoke, the closer we became, then one thing led to another, blah blah blah. I guess you already know the next part of this story. One of your swordfishes spotted us and reported the incident to you. Predictably, you went ballistic. You were so angry, you almost had me killed. Even mother could not hold you back. I, re I remember the whole chase scene very well. You storming into my room, spitting fire, followed by an army of your raging lobsters. I remember flying the way you taught me how to fly as a child, except this time I was flying away from you, from the kingdom, away from everyone. I flew so fast, I amazed even myself. I was like an arrow of light piercing the surface of the sea, projecting up into the clouded floor of the celestial kingdom. I could have awakened the Jade Emperor himself with the roar of my flight, but I knew exactly where I was heading. I went to a distant star I noticed during my first date with Wei Zhang on the beach. I flew towards it until I saw that none of you were following me anymore. 
I had already gone where no Dragon King had ever dared to go. It was a crime to enter the heavens without permission from the Jade Emperor, but I was oddly unafraid. I slowed down when I saw in the distance a lady in a flowing white veil and robe balancing on one hand a vase with a single swaying willow. It was the goddess of mercy that Mom had told me about, a revered deity who helped those in need. Pillowed by the moon, her face glowed with peace and compassion. Maybe if you saw her then, or even spoke to her, some of her qualities might rub off on you. When I prostrated myself at her feet, her eyes opened. You've come a long way, she said. Her voice reminded me of Mami's voice. I told her everything about Wei Zhang, about you, about mother, about how I wanted to be happy. She told me that I wanted, that what I wanted came with a price. And if I was willing to accept it, she would allow me to have what I asked for. Then the most magical, then the most magical thing happened. She drew out the willow from her vase and then waved it over the horns of my head. The next thing I knew, I transformed into a young man. It would have been good if my human appearance had reflected my actual age of more than a few centuries. I mean, it would not have been good. <laughs> and then the goddess was gone, and I was falling through the clouds as if in slow motion. It was the most glorious feeling to be able to fall and keep falling like that. I was falling, falling away from everything, falling from my past, my immortality, you. Eventually, I landed softly on my back upon the same beach where I had met the love of my life. Wei Zhang found me and took me in. We promised to grow old and die together. Wei Zhang and I, blah, blah, blah. And if our son stays strong enough, if our love, my oh son, and if our love stays strong enough, absolutely Freudian, we might even be reborn again and again as lovers for many lifetimes to come. Even if things manage not to work out in the end, as many humans would say, there's still other fish or prawns or lobsters or cuttlefish in the sea. I guess the most important thing I want to tell mom and you is that I am free. Free to love, free to get hurt, free to recover, free to laugh, free to weep, free to love again, and then free to die. Do you think eternity sounds better as an idea than as a reality? I live the, among the humans now, in a city which looks like any other city on the surface of this small little planet. There are as many towns and cities as there are stars in the sky, I suspect. So if we are bored by one, we can always move to another. In this respect, I pity you, rooted to your kingdom every night and day for centuries without end. Perhaps you can do one thing, just one thing, to alleviate your suffering. It is suffering, you know. And I think deep inside yourself, you must agree. You could turn once again to the person you married all those light years ago and tell her that you have missed her and apologize for having been so engrossed in your duties as a king. Mother will be very grateful for sure, and imagine what it would be like for you two to make love again after all this time. If you have read this letter up to this point, haha, I hope that you have listened to what I've written with an open heart and an equally expansive mind. As you can see, both of you have raised me up to be an optimist. And now I would like to leave you and I'm really leaving that for, for good. With a memory of the night you first taught me to fly. This memory of us dancing above the churning ocean surface, curling and uncurling through the night, firing our bodies like missiles in every possible direction. The cold air catching fire from our laughter, the stars winking all around us. How we dance and dance as if we knew we would never dance together like this again your one and only, the ex-dragon prince of the Eastern Sea. Thank you.